This is about you. The infinite you. The part of you that can't be seen, can't be smelled, touched, or tasted. But you know you feel it. Who you really are. In a world lost to confusion, a universe that's partly illusion, when we look for meaning, we often simply find more delusion. Ground your consciousness in the sounds of the universe, a podcast about your true omnipotence. There's a universe inside each of us, but our beliefs keep us constrained to the edges of what we can imagine. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garden, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. What's up and welcome to the one within all to the Innerverse, coming at you from the springtime paradise of Southwest Missouri. I'm your host, Chance, and if you've been following me in this podcast for a while, then you know that getting highly conscious creators in the guest seat is what drives this podcast. And it's always been our goal because there are so many ways to create in this infinite world. We have really been all over the map lately with some of our topics, with episodes on corporate whistleblowers, cosmic calendars, personal training, and that's just naming a few. Today, we're returning to creative roots with a good old-fashioned graphic artist, but one who shares metaphysical themes and personal healing schemes aplenty, because we like that in our mix around here. Our guest today artistically adorns many human temples at the Brick Haas Tattoo Studio in Joplin, Missouri for a day job. But beyond that, she's also fluent in a huge mix of mediums like wood burning, photography, and some innovative stuff like soul painting. And she's also a lightworking guide who's proficient in Reiki energy healing, crystal therapy, tarot divination, and more. Her name is Sarah Josephine, and when we met back in January of this year, she totally dazzled me with her integrative approach to chakra healing and art, and I really enjoyed watching her have a lot of fun with her clients while healing through a process that blends art and intuition, unlocking the patient's own previously covered recognition of what needs attention and balancing in their own life. Follow Sarah Josephine's art page on Facebook at Karmic Seeds Creations, which you'll find linked in the show notes, and take a look at the gorgeous artwork she shares there. And by following her, you can find out when she'll be at an art or music festival near you. She's also available for commissions and, of course, custom tattoos. So find her on social media and show her some love. She's definitely a light-weaving ink master and, and is an awesome part of our tribe. And before we kick it off, just going to remind you, there's no ads on Interverse ever. And the reason for that is because we're 100% listener funded. And by by saying we, I mean me. It's just me up here doing a lot of work. So if you appreciate it at all and you want to get double the episode content each and every week, two-hour podcast, then you can subscribe at patreon.com forward slash Interverse, become a plus member and double your fun. And also help me buy new equipment, help me get free of nine to five slavery, all kinds of things you'd be helping me with. I think it's a good exchange. Find the link to that and to Sarah Josephine in the show notes. And now it's time to get this podcast party started and open up our hearts to squeeze in one more beautiful soul by welcoming Sarah Josephine to the show and into our awareness. It's an episode I've been patiently waiting to create for about three months now, and I'm super excited to be bringing it to you because it's conscious creators like Sarah who take a stand for love in their own personal universe that are healing the karmic stagnancy in the entire reality fractal for us, and I, for one, am crazy grateful. Welcome to the Interverse, Sarah, and thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much. That that introduction is kind of a little bit of mind-blowing, kind of a tearjerker there. Thank you. I appreciate it. (laughs) 
uh, it definitely helps to get things revved up for me to try to tap into what the other person's all about and express it. And with you, it was easy to do. I've already had all these thoughts jumbling around in my head since we met, thinking this is going to be an awesome person to debut on the show. And I guess to kick us off, we can talk about what even initially got me so stoked. I mean, beyond the fact that you're an awesome artist and just an all around cool person, was I saw you working energy healing work with people that also involved them being on a canvas with you. And do you mind explaining that process a little bit and telling us about what it is that blew my mind so much? (laughs) For sure. When I am engaging with people and trying to sort of paint something for them, it's kind of like the live painters that you see, but I do like to include my, um, my clients or personnel or whatever you want to call it. I like to really involve them with the piece. So that way it's like this direct reflection of who they are. And so it's something that they can interpret. And so um, I am a Reiki healer and my primary practice is to use energy healing to sort of tap into what I feel from this person and, you know, kind of get my own sort of feeling of their, their inner world. So whenever I'm doing what I like to call soul paintings, I tap into whatever this energy field looks like to me. And, you know, I've got all these colors and I've got this blank canvas and kind of just start picking things randomly. It's all intuitive based. I don't really have a method to my madness. It's just kind of like, okay, this feels right. And this feels right to me. And so, you know, I'll just start, start painting something. And, you know, sometimes I'll turn it into like a watercolor and it'll be really abstract. And then, or sometimes I'll use really harsh lines with charcoal or my hands even. And all of this process is directly you know, related to what is going on with this person in their life and in their energy field. And, and I, I'll explain the process as I'm, you know, painting it with them. And, you know, when you're watching it, it's, it's just really cool to watch people's faces because they're just, they're kind of in awe because they don't really know what to expect. They have no idea what it's going to look like. And I'm just, I don't know what it's going to look like either. I'm just kind of scribbling at this point. And, you know, towards the end, You know, I explain the colors, why I chose certain colors. To me, each color represents, you know, something beyond us. Like everything has a layer to it. And so the color is my favorite part of, you know, painting or artwork in general. I just, I love color. And um, I think it's also because it's, you know, related to frequencies and to your chakras. And you know, learning about the chakras has really helped me put meaning behind color. And so like, I'll convey this meaning to the person that I'm working with. And almost every single time, like it resonates in some way, you know, and it always, almost always, you know, correlates with something that's going on in their lives. And I mean, I don't, I don't follow like a scientific theory behind things that I do. I just, I see it purely as a creative standpoint. Like you kind of have to look behind, you know, certain layers to get to the meaning that you're trying to find. And I think that's, what's really beautiful about it because I, I watch, you know, their minds open up and then they start to like go deeper and deeper and deeper into all of these layers. And then they begin, they begin to see things about themselves that, you know, they previously were shut off to before and as those things are opened up to them then they you know they actually sort of embrace that and then then they kind of feel empowered and inspired to begin creating of you know something of their own and um so that's kind of like the gist behind my you know energy paintings um and i mean there's a, there's a lot of layers to it and um there, there really isn't anything, like none of them match each other. They're all very different and com- complex in their own little ways. It's amazing to think about how disconnected we get from our own bodies or from our own, uh, uh, from the obvious stuff that we could be doing to 
get ourselves out of a rut or help ourselves heal or whatever. And it's just, it's just, it gets ignored. You know, I mean, we're all guilty of it. And I think that once we have an experience that is almost like an epic experience or just at very least a cool story that we can associate with why we are now making this change or healing for whatever reason, it's like it gives people the excuse they need to flip the switch. And <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Have you, have you, have you witnessed that? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I completely agree with that for sure. hundred percent. And I, I'm that way as well. Like I'm definitely, you know, when I see something that's inspiring, you know, I'm like, Oh, I'm inspired. Or, you know, I see someone running on the side, you know, on the side of the road and I'm like, Oh, you know, I kind of feel like a jog now, you know? <laughs> so just, it sparks something, uh, you know, art in general and just seeing things that you, you want for yourself or seeing things that you kind of push aside in your own reality. I feel like that's, you know, really profound. And have you found, I get this with a lot of Reiki healers and then myself, I practice Reiki. Uh, I mean, sometimes I'm not like a practitioner per se, but when, when it's called for, I definitely bust it out. <laughs> and I've found this to be true. Other Reiki healers would agree. So I'm going to assume that you probably would agree with this and I want your take on it, but you, you see your own work coming out or what you need to work on in yourself coming up as a reflection of the work that the person that you are helping is also needing to go through or going through. And what I, what I mean by that, I guess, is uh, even on the symbolic realm, what you just decide to put on that canvas, it does seem to correlate to like a reflection of your own self and their own self. Would you say... How does that speak to the unity in all things, I guess, is my question for you. <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, you know, when you said unity, it was funny because as you said that, I was thinking, oh, yeah, like the union that I feel with that other person. So it definitely reflects this wholeness that is within you and everyone around you and everything around you, you know, and, and you can... The, the beauty about Reiki is that it's it's in all things. You can literally, you know, give Reiki and get Reiki back, you know, by channeling it with anything. And, you know, you can go up to a tree and, you know, try to resonate with a tree and you're going to unite with that tree. You're, it's going to teach you something about yourself and you're going to be teaching it something. You know, it's just, it's just like this delicate balance back and forth. And whenever I give Reiki to people and, um, and they, they give it back to me, you know, it's like, I don't feel like I, you know, I'm not creating that in myself. It's like, it's more like I'm receiving that in myself. And, um, it's just this, this sort of flow, this exchange. And it's really, it's really beautiful. Yeah. Would you say that then basically the imagination is actually the channel for all the healing that takes place in these in these um, types of energy works? Yes, I do. Um, I think that, you know, some, some people say that they have sensation. So like bodily sensations and, you know, they, you know, you could say that, Oh, that's, that's a physical aspect, but I mean, all of the physical is, manifestations of the spiritual and so in some way or another it's going to take you to a spiritual level by you know you're 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 opening something up you're you're opening yourself up to this sort of abstract world where you're you yourself begin to connect dots and like i'm not doing anything at that point like you are the one that's that's doing this like you're the one that's opening yourself up and you continue to open yourself up and some people have really profound experiences and it does change your life it's 100 percent changed my life um it always i mean every time i sort of you know get kind of stuck in a hole or i forget like i you know, it, it always comes back to me and then it kind of wakes me up and reminds me like, Hey, you're here, you're present. It's okay. Just chill, relax and move on with life. You know, I think it's the, 
I guess, just trauma and fear and conditioning, basically, that causes us to close up to the fact that we have this like healing energy available to us at all times. I really like to metaphorically basically say everything is eyes. Anyone that's had a pretty intense psychedelic experience can <laughs> attest to the fact that it's all everything's eyes yes. <laughs> at, the root, at the root of the fractal. And that means like two things. It means eyes like as in a perceptual a unit that that perceives and also eyes as in like a self as in the self is in all things so uh i guess when it comes to this chakra healing and using the the color side of the spectrum these these chakras are energy centers in our body that are like lenses that are either or even eyes like i'm saying they're either open or closed they're dilated more or less and so when you're opening it up in yourself it gives the other person that same it gives it creates an opening in the other person as long as they're not like rejecting what you're doing if they came to you for the practice then it definitely is the case mm -hmm. but yeah i love i love everything we're we're saying here with reiki um i wanted to i guess while we're on the subject of it of the imagination side of it can you give us your take of what it kind of i know that there's not like a, a set process but what does it sort of feel like to be in the process i want people listening to have an idea or an imaginary concept that they can use for their own self-initiation into this? Um, into Reiki itself or like the like energy, like painting with Reiki? We can talk more about painting with Reiki because that's super interesting. And I think maybe other practitioners of Reiki would be interested in incorporating this. Uh, but specifically, you know, I've always not always, but once I realized this, it's been a state, a standard thing for me is to realize that if I can't feel something, then I imagine what it would feel like. And then it gives my body or my mind the language to communicate mm -hmm. when it's actually happening. So mm -hmm. can you kind of give us your, like, what is your language for yourself when this is happening? Like, what is the internal, the internal process, if you will? Cause I, I mean, we all may have our own internal processes for, what we do with energy work, but can you describe yours to any degree? Hmm. It's a good question. So I would say my internal process is to become an observer first, to take myself out of the role of being active, um, of doing something. I, you know, I don't, I try not to jump into the future or the past, and I just kind of become present as, as well as I can be. I know it's kind of hard sometimes to fully engage in that present moment, but I definitely feel like whenever I do allow myself to sort of relax and become this observer of my senses and of my body and of my mind, that's whenever the magic kind of happens. And for me, it's all intention. As soon as I have the thought, because I think it all kind of breaks down to moments. And like, as soon as I have the thought, and, and I'll say literally a lot, because I, I really mean literally, like at that time, when I have that singular thought, that's whenever I become that thing, that thought, that thought becomes my imagination and my being. And um, so whenever I say I want to be present, I am present in that moment. Um, and when I say I want to connect with Reiki, in other words, you know, the universal life force, whenever I want to connect, I am connecting, bam, right then I'm connected. And I have to truly believe in that. If I'm not, if I am questioning myself or I'm just saying it because I don't actually believe in it, you know, it's not going to happen. It's just, you're going to be thinking about it and be like, um, am I, am I connecting to Reiki? Is, is this thing on, you know? And it's just not really the case for, for me in my internal process. And so whenever I choose to become present and connect with Reiki, which is what I think that Reiki is, is just being present with that energy, with the energy that's surrounding you, that's, that's all around you right now. That's, you know, that's, that's whenever I start to turn inward 
and I began to feel. I, you know, as you do when you observe any situation, you know, you look out and you pick things out or, you know, something catches your eye. And so, you know, I'm feeling really tight in my heart space. You know, I'm having trouble, you know, breathing or I'm not catching my breath. Okay, so I'm going to catch my breath and I'm going to fill up that heart space. I'm going to open that up. You know, I'm feeling this kind of clutter in my head. You know, something's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm having troubles in my relationship or, you know, I'm doing something in my life that I'm actually not truly satisfied with. Okay. Um, so let's just observe, let's just, you know, why, why are these thoughts occurring? And when, when, for me, when Reiki comes in, I, I don't think anything like that. You know, I, I want to resolve the issues, but it's like, I'm not the one doing the work. Like this energy is doing the work. All this light that's coming in is doing it for me. And so there's no pressure on myself whatsoever. And, you know, I feel like, you know, as a human being that wants to be responsible, that wants to be aware, like you want to play your part. And I feel like a lot of light workers have this sort of pressure to, to play their part, to heal, you know, go out and heal someone or, you know, like there's, you know, the world needs your healing. And it's like, whenever that light comes in, you realize that like, it's, that's not, that pressure isn't on you. Like the pressure is it like gets lifted because it's not you anymore. It's this grander thing that is, that's healing you. Like you, you're being healed. Like at, at that moment, like you are being healed. And, um, and so for me, whenever, you know, whenever I am letting go and in this moment of, of presence and of being, um, I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm not pressured. I'm not tense. I'm, you know, even whenever I'm finding all these things in my mind and in my body that are, feeling tight and tense it is infused with energy and it's gone you know and I don't have to really do anything about it and of course I mean there is this sense of you know awareness and responsibility for yourself but I feel like that awareness um, of yourself is the practice of being yourself as in literally just being present and and being united and whole and at peace with the way that things are. So that's kind of my answer in a nutshell. I'm sorry if I'm kind of all over the place, but. Actually, no, that was great. That's exactly the type of response I'm looking for as a host where you like really think through it or not, not think through it, feel through it (laughs) and uh, give us, you gave us a really great breakdown of your, it may be an abstract breakdown, but it's definitely something that I think we can all relate to that we most of us probably at some point or another or, or at all times have felt like this soul crushing pressure like i have to fix the world the world is fucked i have to fix it <laughs> yeah i mean that's probably even why i started making this show was because i felt that pressure <laughs> to be honest and mm-hmm. it even causes me to step back and go like literally just over the last few days i've been dealing with this super dark thought like what if i'm doing the wrong thing <laughs> what if what, what if this was all just like uh your ego getting the better of you thinking that you should just be a podcaster when really oh you need to gosh. be working really you need to just be working on yourself and and getting yourself into the best alignment with nature possible mm-hmm. <laughs> you know which all that is it's not that it's untrue that i should be that we should all be trying to get into alignment with nature but i think on a good day you know, it was just a little hard for me, but on a good day, I'm the enthusiasm I feel about what I do should tell me everything I need to know about what I'm doing. And I think you probably know what I mean. Like the enthusiasm that is there when you're actually connecting with somebody for healing or just with a a soul, soulful conversation that, that is where the magic is at. And so it's in the connecting where the magic is. And so I, I, I forgive myself for whatever possibly um, uh, wrong motives I have for creating this show to begin with. And now I'm just <laughs> grateful that I get to use it as a vehicle to connect. And uh, what what I wanted to ask you about in specifics with uh, 
with Reiki, while you were going through all that was, do, do you feel like this is something that maybe if we were in more of a alignment or health, I, sh- I should say, like generally speaking, that we wouldn't even need, that it would be more or less just like constantly available to us, empowering us, this universal light energy? Yeah, I think that we kind of put the barriers up ourselves. Like there's these, you know, blinders and we're the ones that move them up and down. I feel like it's available to us all the time, 24 seven, year round, all our lives. And um, I really do. I feel like it's this sort of, I feel like it's a defense mechanism for one. And I feel like it's just a plethora of things. It can be anything, you know, it could be, you know, I don't want to feel good today. It, you know, something as simple as, you know, wanting to sort of be, you know, that negativity or you just, you need to feel it. And, you know, I do that too. I have days where I put up my blinders and I say, I just need to feel this thing right now. Like I'm kind of upset with myself and I'm just going to be upset with myself for a little bit. And then, you know, I, I let, allow that though. And I think that it's okay to allow that. I think that it's actually healthy to allow yourself bad moods or allow yourself negative thoughts. Don't, don't let them go on. But I definitely think that it's okay to feel into them and to sort of, you know, allow them to stick around long enough to understand why they're there in the first place. I agree with that. I think that basically when we reject the mood, that perpetuates the thing. (laughs) <laughs> what you resist persists, as they say. I think that not necessarily in all cases that phrase applies as being like a universally true maxim. But when it comes to moods, definitely the case. Because when you create space for it and uh, bring attention and awareness to it, it's usually not actually that bad. It's just, it's actually a lot more mild once you look at it. I think that applies to pretty much all forms of pain. Like if you stub your toe really hard, A, you might want to pay attention to your thoughts and your intentions right at the moment where it happened because clearly they were so distracting that they're taking you out of paying attention to where your damn foot was going. (laughs) But (laughs) secondarily, when you feel into the pain and sense into pain with your awareness, it always eases up. Like, I don't know how that works if you get like a gunshot wound. Hopefully I don't have to find out, but... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I wanted to ask you about crystals though because I know that crystals are a part of your gig and I'm I'm holding a a crystal spear right now while we talk. So I'm, I'm, I'm about it. <laughs> I thought that's what that was. I was like, Oh, I need one of those. <laughs> yeah. It's like a bamboo staff with a piece of selenite on the top. I've been bragging about this to everybody, but I finally have my setup for podcasting where I can stand and do it. And I can like hold a staff and be a proper wizard and everything. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, tell us about crystals. You like why you like them, what, what they do with you and uh, for you, I should say. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I love all crystals. There's, I, there's not one that I, I don't like. Like, um, and honestly, it, it fluctuates for me. Um, amethyst is one of my favorite crystals, and like, it's just, it was one of my very first crystals that I ever, um, you know, received whenever I first started getting into energy healing and um, learning more about crystals and and sacred um gems and things like that um but it's it's definitely like a mood booster for me and it's just kind of a reminder you know and I feel like every crystal kind of comes into your life um at the right time that it's meant to come into your life for sure um and you know I'm always I always kind of whenever I'm looking at crystals and I'm you know trying to find a new one or you know if one comes across me it I always look at the colors and think about you know um color theory and you know I relate them to the chakras and um and going back to amethyst you know one of the reasons why I just I love it so much is is purple and purple is your third eye um so you know your intuition and you know all of that sort of invisible spectrum Um, and, you know, bringing light and energy into that realm. I just, I think that's really cool to tap into. And citrine, citrine is one of my favorites. It's orange and orange is sacral. Sacral is your creativity. Um, also an emotional center. 
So, you know, creativity, emotions brings abundance to, you know, wanting to spark your imagination and creativity and use all those emotions to, you know, make light of them. But yeah, I, I love using crystals and into my own personal healing. Um, I always wear a crystal around my neck because you know, crystals are really powerful and cool on their own. But then whenever you start researching them um, and whenever you start learning more about, you know, where they came from or how they were formed, you kind of gain this appreciation for them on another level um, that makes you, you know, want to learn more about them or you just you kind of just you feel a little bit more love towards them. Um, and I, I love that about them. What I really enjoy about them is that they work kind of on the same lines as what I said earlier, which is that sometimes you just need like a cool story. What I love about having an extra story to give yourself the boost of why now this thing is activated for you. Like I recently, on my birthday, I was given a gift card to a cool metaphysical bookshop to uh, just get whatever I wanted. And I picked out, I knew I wanted a ring. And I was really pretty sure I wanted amethyst, but it took me forever to go through everything they had and find the perfect ring that actually fit because I have an odd finger size. And it turns out that I was able to find only one ring that was suitable and it was amethyst, which I think is great. Uh And without going into too much like personal detail, the nature of it being like, I'm working on the crown chakra and third eye chakras most right now for my personal development. And I say working with, um, I'm aware that those are the ones that could be more balanced. (laughs) It's not like I can actually force anything to happen per se, other than to keep doing my best to balance. But when I got this amethyst ring, I noticed a distinctive distaste uh, arise for certain personal habits that I've always known were not to my better interest or health. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, I mean, I didn't even really have to tell myself the story about it. Maybe it's just because I'm that used to using crystals for those type of purposes. But I definitely felt more sovereignty in my ability to choose for myself whether or not I was going to pursue certain addictive behaviors or habits or even ways of looking at at things that where I was impinging on someone else's sovereignty and not noticing it. So Mm -hmm. it's a whole spectrum of stuff that goes into each chakra. And it's really worth studying these relations because even without having crystals accessible, you can actually do like your own Rorschach test, you know, art, soul painting. You don't need Sarah there with you. I think that the audience could actually take this up and just sort of stream of consciousness, throw colors onto a page with whatever mediums they want, and then go about interpreting what it is that they're creating for themselves and helping them themselves gain some more awareness. It does help to have a guide though, like you do. I mean, that's going to get accelerate the process massively. But I, I just think it's really awesome how we can take our own development into our own hands and allow for changes more, facilitate more changes in a positive way, just with stuff as simple as crystals. And the ones that you yeah. named are definitely powerhouse ones. And <laughs> Citrine comes up a lot on the show, actually. Maybe it's because it's sort of creativity focused podcast, but uh, mm-hmm. does it come in to, do you, do you use them in actual Reiki work as well? Do you like place them on a the body or anything like that? I do. Um, I, I'll, and not all the time. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. So it just kind of depends on what I'm feeling. And that's what I think is really cool about crystals too, is like, there's no right or wrong way of doing them. They're just, I mean, they're just always just there. I mean, it's just your intentions and how you use them. Um, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy using them in my Reiki sessions. Um, and I also just like giving them away. Like there's, you know, I get a lot of just really cool synchronicities and stuff whenever I, you know, obtain a crystal and then I, you know, go into Walmart or something one day and, you know, pass someone that I feel like needs this crystal. And I, you know, I'll go in with the intention of wanting to give it away. And, you know, one person will kind of catch my eye and I'll be like, Oh, okay, here, like, this is for you. And, um, and it's like, they, they are transferred to where they need to be at exactly the right time. I, I, it's, it's really interesting. And, and I love, I love crystals. I love sharing them. I think that it's like, 
sharing that energy, you're going to get that good energy back. Um, especially, you know, depending on your intentions and stuff. I've definitely experienced big synchronicities from giving crystals away where sometimes they even come back to me like the very same crystal in a way that is beyond fathoming and against all odds. But in general, what you're saying just reflects that old maxim that what you love, if you let it go, it will come back to you. But it will come back to you in an evolved form. Like it will progress and expand and have Mm -hmm. fulfilled more of its potential. So, you know, we don't own any of the stuff that we pretend we own. There is such a thing as like property and ownership and territory and and in terms of things that you're caring for and actively keeping up. And that's our relationship to the earth, but not in like, uh, this is mine forever and I can pass it on to my children and keep it away from everyone else type of type of jam. But I'm wondering, Mm -hmm. do you have any uh, synchronicity stories related to crystals that you can think of? Crystals. (laughs) Crystals. <laughs> oh man. So one of my most insane moments with crystals was during the the great lunar eclipse. Um and I had a obsidian, which is, you know, a like a black kind of rough stone, and then a quartz crystal, which is clear. Um, and I had them sitting inside of my console in my car like inside it you know no light was being shown on this part um well I went you know to my car during the eclipse to grab them and when I got them they the obsidian was freezing cold like for rigid and then the quartz was so hot that I couldn't even hold it in my hand like it was burning and I could only assume that because of, you know, the eclipse and all the energies that were going on, like, you know, obsidian absorbs energy, you know, and so I could, you know, to me, it makes sense, you know, why it would be so cold, you know, absorbing all that energy and sort of like, you know, taking it in Um, and then the quartz amplifying it. So, you know, that, that would make sense why it was so hot, but what didn't make sense is them being hidden you know, and so they weren't directly in the sunlight or anything. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty bizarre. That's cool. It does have a very sun and moon thing going on with quartz and obsidian. I actually found out that moonlight is cold. The way that sunlight is warm, if you leave something in the moonlight, it actually makes it colder. Like literally, if there's something in the moonlight and then something in the shade that's not lit by the moon the shade is warmer than the moonlight. And that blew my mind. It's obvious proof that this is a luminous body and not just reflecting sunlight like we're told, but maybe that's that's another conversation (laughs) where, you know, all the lies that we're told about the nature of the cosmos we're in. Um, But that's fascinating. And also the rays, I I would think, penetrate through a car too. I mean, there's a lot more than just the visible light spectrum going on. So that's pretty cool. I've Definitely experience warm crystals, cold crystals, vibrating crystals. <laughs> they, they do some wacky stuff once you start uh, actually paying attention to them. And the Earth's crust is like made up of more crystal than dirt if you go down far enough, theoretically, as far as I know. I guess that might not be true, mm-hmm. but there's a lot in there. It could be like a neural network for the planet for all we know. But I want to ask you about tattoos, totally like shifting gears here, because we haven't had a tattoo artist on the show before. And we've had all kinds of all manner of artists on Interverse at this point. I think it's pretty cool that you're the first tattoo artist. And what's it like being a tattoo artist? And do you recommend it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, if, I, if, if you're asking if I recommend um, other people becoming tattoo artists, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say um, definitely go through some training first. I feel like that's always just a good call. I mean, I think if you want to stick and poke around on your friends, go for it. Like, that's fun. And, you know, it, it does mean something like it. I my very first or one of my first tattoos was a stick and poke. So um, I say go for it. You know, if, if it's what you want to do, do it. Um, but being a tattoo artist. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's been a journey. That's for sure. Um, I, you know, when I originally started, um, my apprenticeship, um, which is a little over a year ago, so I've not been doing it for very long. Um, it, you know, I went into it not really knowing, 
um, or expecting anything. I, I kind of just didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, but I had been wanting to do it for you know a really long time. It, it's been on my mind since sixth grade. I started doing Sharpie tattoos on all of my peers and, you know, getting paid for it. <laughs> and so that's kind of where I got my start. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I went to college and um, wanting to do tattoos and um, they thought I was kind of crazy because it, I mean, there's not a really, I mean, t- tattooing school isn't really a thing. I mean, there are places that do it, but it's not really a thing. Um, and so I just went to a standard um, arts and science college. It's the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma. It's just a really good school. Um, but I, you know, I went into it thinking like, okay, I'll just learn, you know, some more stuff about art, kind of get more basics down and increase my confidence with myself um, and then see where it takes me. Um, and so three years in college and I've, you know, I had my fill of it. I was kind of getting tired of it, a little bit stressed with other things going on in my life. And, um, I dropped out. I had a semester left. (laughs) And so go me, you know, my parents were really proud, but, um, it was, it was definitely worth it. You know, that last semester was just a bunch of classes that I didn't necessarily need. Um, all of the like science and math classes and, and stuff like that. Um, And so at that point, I, you know, I was going through a lot of life changes and that's actually around the same time that I woke up, um, and realized, you know, I don't need this piece of paper to prove myself to, you know, to, to have a job and make a career out of my art and my living, you know, I don't, I don't need this piece of paper. Um, and so that was kind of the realization that sparked my whole movement um, to, to finding myself and to finding the life that I desired, um, following my dreams. I grew up with a fairly open family. I mean, my, my, my parents were pretty cool about, um, pushing me to pursue my dreams and such. But, you know, when your kid tells you that they want to be a tattoo artist, I mean, it's, it's a little questionable and, um, especially my grandparents at the time, they were just like, no way, like you should go be in a vet or a teacher, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so Something um, respectable. <laughs> yeah. And which is, it's cool. I, you know, I get it. I've, you know, I've, I used to be a little bit bitter towards it, um, but I can understand, you know, their point of view. They're just wrong. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is wrong, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. I totally love that you pointed that out. That you're like, they're not villains here for that. They actually want what's best for you, but they have a different perspective. They do absolutely, and I've I've grown to understand that, I suppose. Um, and so yeah, so I dropped out of school and kind of got some odd jobs here and there and I dropped tattooing completely. I was just like, no, that's um, maybe it really isn't for me. And trying to find an apprenticeship somewhere is really hard. Um, Finding a good shop and people who are willing to take you under their wing. And most places make you apprentice for at least like one to two years um, before you actually get to even start using machine. Um, And so So yeah, I just, it just kind of got thrown aside and, um, you know, I worked at a greenhouse for a little bit and I love plants. Um, that sort of gave me an appreciation for nature more. And so that was like a good journey to sort of veer off on. And it also, I feel like that really, you know, that made an impact on, you know, my current life and, you know, the ways that I believe now, you know, if I wouldn't have taken that detour, I wouldn't have had that. Um, and so, you know, I did all these other little jobs. Um, and then I, you know, I, I'm an artist in my soul and I want to do art every day, all day if I could. Um, and so, you know, even though I loved the job I was working, I felt like it was just, it just still didn't feed my soul the way that I wanted it to. Um, and so, 
um, someone had mentioned tattoos again. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll look around locally, see if there's any shops um, that are, you know, good. And um, so I found one, which is Brick House, the place that I'm currently working. And um, I walked in there and I didn't even bring my portfolio in. You know, I was just like, hey, you know, are you guys interested in someone you know, answering the phone or, you know, I wasn't even planning on being an artist there. I was just thinking, okay, something to work my way up. I'd, I'd at least be able to get to do art all day, you know? And, um, so I showed them my stuff and they were like, oh, you should be, you should be an apprentice. And they like offered it to me right then and kind of blew my mind. And, you know, I left and I was just like super giddy. And I was like, did that just happen? Like, oh my gosh. It's like, whoa, hang on. Like I just now got an apprenticeship and then I've been wanting one forever. Um, so it, it really just aligned perfectly. Um, and you know, having that sort of progression up to that, it just like, it made my appreciation for that opportunity, like just so much stronger. Um, and so I apprenticed for, you know, several months, it really didn't take me very long to get my license. Um, the place that I'm at is they're super cool. I mean, all the people there, um, they're just really, really positive in the fact that, you know, they want to better each other. They're not there to compete against each other. And so when, you know, when I came on, they didn't want me to be, you know, that, that person that just sweeps and picks up after everybody and goes get, goes to get lunch for everyone and um, they put a machine in my hand instead that, you know, like you're an artist, we can see that you're an artist and we believe that you should be doing art. Um, and so that's kind of how it happened. And it, it's, it's still surreal to me to this day, um, the ways that that had occurred. Um, and I just, I never realized that it would impact me in the way that it has. Um, and, you know, being a tattoo artist, um, it's much more than just, you know, permanently doing some art on some people's skin. Like there is just so much depth to it. Um, and, you know, a lot of people that come in to get tattoos, you know, there's, there is meaning behind them. Even the ones that don't have meaning have a lot of meaning. Um, you know, even if it's, you know, uh, just something random, you know, it, it's, it's something that's going on in their life at that time that makes them want to go to that shop on that day and get that tattoo. Um, and you know, I've done a lot of pieces for people that I were really, really special to them. Um, and you know, you really, you connect with your, your client and, you know, you're, you're in that space with them. And someone told me recently that, um, whenever you're giving tattoos, um, or whenever you're getting tattooed, either way, um, your energy field actually opens up. Um, and I could, I can see that because of, you know, the amount of, um, stimulation that's being sort of like, pounded into you essentially. Um, I mean, yeah, you are very open. You're kind of, they're kind of like punching minuscule holes, but all in one spot. So it is opening up the energy field in the same way when someone has like a gash or an injury, but just not, it's not actually a dire injury. It's just like a bunch of tiny little holes that together would be like uh, going from a wall to going to, to becoming like a cheesecloth or something as far as the energy yeah. permeability. It's not like a huge rip hole, but there is an opening in a way. I mean, that just is what I'm feeling on an intuitive level to cut in. I'm fascinated by the story. I'm, I hate that I just interrupted, but no, you're I, totally fine. Just, it just blows my mind. <laughs> it's cool. No, that's a good way of putting it too. Cause it's very like, um, cause you know, even whenever I'm getting tattooed, like I've, you know, I started when I was like 18 and I'm addicted. I love getting tattooed. I love giving tattoos. I love everything about it. Um, and you know, there's just, there's a lot of taboo on it. And, um, you know, with religion and doctrine and just mindsets, but, you know, in a way I can kind of understand the, the fear behind it. I can kind of understand the worry of, because you are opening yourself up and you are 
being very vulnerable in that moment to something, um, you know, coming into your energy field. And um, while I don't necessarily, I mean, I think anybody, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I think that anybody should just do what they want if they want a tattoo for whatever reason, you know, that's, that's what they chose. Um, but, you know, I, I can't understand having um, bad intentions while getting a tat, tat getting a tattoo, um, you know, or getting a really dark sort of negative connotation with a tattoo. Um, so, I mean, I can, I can kind of understand that as well. Um, but on the lighter side of things, I can, you know, there's a lot of potential with tattooing. Um, and I think that, you know, me being a healer and, um, like, you know, being able to, um, tap into Reiki, I think that my, you know, if my client is open to that as well, I think that could just be really, really magical. I think that, that, you know, the opportunity and potential for that type of healing, um, to take place is just profound. Um, you know, and some of my favorite, you know, stories have just come from, you know, the people that I've engaged with while giving them tattoos. Um, and, you know, people really do become vulnerable when getting tattoos. And, you know, going back to that, you know, being really open um, and your energy just being totally exposed, like, yeah, like you're in pain and, it, you know, things just come out. Um, and, you know, I remember this one lady, um, super awesome lady got this tattoo of, um, I think it was like a care bear. And this was kind of in the beginning of my tattoo journey. And, you know, my instant thought was why, why that? Like why a care bear? And in my head, honestly, I was kind of judgmental about it. And, um, and then she told me, ah, well, this is, you know, it's for my, uh, my daughter that had passed away when she was, you know, a baby. And I, you know, instantly like shot through the heart, like, holy crap. Now I feel like a jerk, <laughs> you know, um, but it, but it just like hit me to the core. Like, you know, they're going through all this pain, this physical pain. Um, but it doesn't even match, you know, the emotional pain that they are dealing with, you know, in their lives. And this in some way is helping them. And like, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. Um, but she, you know, after I gave her that tattoo, she like, she looked at me and she had tears in her eyes and she was just like, thank you so much. This means so much to me. And it just like, she changed my life in that moment. You know, I had a mindset before that and that interaction changed my mindset. And Ever since then, I've not judged another tattoo that's come in. You know, there's it's just, you know, there's a reason behind the pain. There's, and, you know, there's a lot of meaning and symbolism in the pain that people hold. And, you know, um, tattoos, they don't feel good. They really don't. They're, they're not pleasant to get. I mean, some people enjoy it. Hey, whatever. Um, but, you know, for the majority, like, no, they hurt. And there's a reason, you know, why they hurt and beyond, you know, you're getting stabbed over and over again by a bunch of little needles. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the purpose behind it. And it always means something later when you look at that, you know, it's, it is a reminder. It's sort of like a moment that is kind of frozen in time. It's, it's there on your body as a, you know, is this symbolic piece of yourself. And, um, you know, when I look at my tattoos on my body, like they're slowly starting to sort of age and I can tell, but it just like, it gives me, you know, a meaning and a purpose behind those. And they're just reminders. It's just, you know, why did I get that one thing then, you know, and how does that affect, you know, what does that mean to me now? Um, and, you know, I just, I just think it's, it's just really cool. Tattoos are just cool. It's just amazing. The things that, that they, they mean and, you know, artwork in general, you know, when you look at something, there's so many layers behind something. And, you know, I tattoo a lot of nature. I love tattooing nature. 
and um, sacred geometry. Um, and, you know, that's, that's a living, breathing artwork. And it's going to be with you until you die. And that's just so beautiful to me, you know, that that's that, that meaning, that intention behind that one time, it will always be there. Whoo, got me thinking about my own tattoos and why I got them and the point in my life where that all happened and so many other thoughts just swirling around. Like, I, I I honestly, I was like sitting there with so much reaction emotionally, positively to your whole story from getting the apprenticeship on to like what it means to you. I was like, damn, this is the kind of podcast I would listen to. (laughs) I was like, really happy about that. (laughs) I usually think that about my guests, but the, I love hearing you flow about, about these things. It's been super awesome talking. And I want to also give you as much time as you would like to say anything in, in closing, closing thoughts, because it's been a very fascinating conversation and never thought this deeply about tattoos before. And I bet some of the audience members are feeling the same way. Oh, well, thank you so much for allowing me to, to open up and express, you know, the things that propel me and that I'm interested in and that I feel like have a lot of potential. Um, and, you know, I just really want to encourage everyone to um, follow their creative instincts. Um, and to you know follow their dreams and their passions and to not let go of those things and anyone that says that they're not an artist um that's not true you are an artist (laughs) you are definitely an artist i definitely um am grateful for all of the experiences that i've that i've been through and for all the people that i have engaged in um and for all of the people that are listening right now i feel like um you know, hopefully some of our conversation resonates um, with someone out there and it inspires you to um, to progress and to live fully. Yeah, fully and fearlessly. I guess that's the trick is just like being an artist with your life and realizing that you're going to make choices and you're going to learn from them and you're going to re get you're going to get the chance to redo the project. <laughs> That's, I think, the ultimate argument for why tattoos aren't really a big deal, man. It's fine because you're not just going to live one life. Uh, that's a silly notion, I think, is very limiting and restricting. <laughs> so uh, mm-hmm. go for it. It's your temple and your life to make meaning out of. Meaning is creating meaning is sort of like why we're here, I would say. And, you know, honestly, one more example before we get off of here, but um, there is this one girl that came in for a tattoo and um, she was Pentecostal and she had a watch on, um, she's wearing a watch and it's really, I mean, it's probably like an inch and a half or so thick. Right. And she's like, I really want this tattoo and, but you have to make it small enough to, so, so I can hide it behind my watch. And, um, and she wanted just, it was a little Saturn, like a illustration, tiny illustration of Saturn with, you know, some stars around it. And, um, you know, it meant the world to her just to have this. And, you know, Saturn represents like restriction and limitations and, you know, um, going on, or to the beyond, you know, and that's like what it meant for her, you know, and kind of breaking free of, of, you know, the beliefs that are limiting her and constricting. And it was just really cool, super cool experience. But. A Saturnian energy likes to occult itself as well. So that's funny that it's like to be hidden behind a watch also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's radical. Well, I'm sure that we could just fill a podcast with stories about specific tattoos and their meanings. You should get people to apply for tattoos and actually describe why they want it just so you can have like a log and use it as like a psychology case study or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. <laughs> Wouldn't it? You could literally write a book, uh, literally, <laughs> that was literally. just uh, tattoos and what they mean 
to our spirits or, or something. You come up with a cooler title, title than that. I don't know. But that's just my idea. Someone out there, take that. That's a good idea. Write a book yeah. about tattoo meanings. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I better let you get back to living that life of yours. And it's been really radical chatting with you. And I hope people do follow you on Instagram. I'm going to go make sure that I am. I might not be, but I think I am. And if not, I, I shortly will be. And uh, well, catch you guys all later. Thank you, Sarah. This has been wonderful. Big love. All right. Thank you so much. Love to you as well. Congratulations, my friends. You are now attuned to give Reiki. I mean, if you've been listening to Interverse for a while, you've probably heard quite a few episodes that more or less would constitute an attunement to the universal light healing energy that we all carry and can transmit. But I really do hope that this particular conversation encouraged you to be a explorer of this type of thing for yourself. Sarah Josephine was a really cool guest, definitely outside the box for me to start thinking about tattoos because I don't really think about that very often. Yet it tied in into what I've been often talking about when it comes to magic, energy healing. Actually, and plus, we got a little bit more onto the magic and occult side of things. We talked about sigils actually being able to imbue tattoos with positive power and Reiki energy. And about the meaning of a few of our own tattoos, she and I described those. We discussed why making art helps with indecisiveness, practices for staying in the right mindset to responsibly put art on someone's body. Turns out that also applies to ways to responsibly just live your life and stay in the right framework and vibe. Talked about breaking the reality movie down into moment by moment frames. That was pretty cool. And just generally, she described some personal meditation techniques, kind of how it feels for her. And I think people could vibe with that. And we talked about something I'm sure many of you love, which is sacred geometry and how contemplating it and creating art using it can lead to spontaneous growth. We also talked about connecting to higher self and revealing the shadow self with tarot and divination arts. That's really just the least bit of a taste I could give you about what went on in Plus. If you had not caught on yet, you're new around here, welcome and thanks for tuning in. I hope you find lots of good episodes to enjoy, but if you've been around the Interverse for a few rides, then you know about Plus. It is the way that you're going to get twice as long of an episode with the way juicier stuff that we can't even crack into after until we've warmed up for an hour. So if you love the show, do us both a favor, sign up for plus $5 donation gets you a two hour podcast each week. And there is even planning going on very near on the horizon. We will be actually adding some features to plus and expanding it. And even taking it away from being just a Patreon-only service. So sit tight for that, but don't sit tight as in don't sign up for Plus. You can do it through patreon.com forward slash interverse for now, and then soon you'll also be able to do it through my website. More, de- t- more details to come on that. I want to give another big thanks to Sarah Josephine, and while you're in the show notes looking for Plus, why not also follow her on Twitter or Facebook, Karmic Seeds Creations on Facebook, and... Sarah Josephine Art on Instagram, I believe. Either way, it's linked there in the show notes. Go check that out. Show her some love. She is definitely a wonderful being and makes some pretty cool art, especially on people's skin. And she did say something in the beginning of the show that I thought was so profound, that Reiki is about being present to the energy that's all around you right now. So anyone that's been on psychedelics knows the whole everything is eyes motif, but What that actually means is that we don't even ever get away with anything, even stuff we think we do in secret. Basically, darkness and and secrets and lies are all false. They don't actually exist even in the way that we think they do or have power or standing. Nothing is unknown to ancestors and to the whatever part of spirit is just constantly able to perceive us. And I'm not talking about like a big brother government type of thing. Government tries to emulate that with their whole surveillance networks, but they'll never be able to actually achieve it. I'm talking about all is self. And no matter what you do, even if you think it's done in secret, you're there. So you know about it. So it's not a secret. (laughs) Let's, Let's channel that realization into becoming the observer in our own life as many moments of it as we can. Because that helps you defeat all the demons and addictions. All you got to do is look at them. 
shine the light on them. Why are they there? How did they get there? What are they? As soon as you're doing that identifying, it's kind of like in the old occult grimoires. Once you know the demon's name, you control it, right? So <laughs> that applies, man. That applies to every little personal bad habit and peccadillo you might have. We've all got them. It's a never-ending game of picking them up and putting them down. Don't feel bad about what you are or are not currently carrying in your energy pattern, but just know being the observer is the ultimate superpower to remove it if it's not a part of the pattern that you think fits harmoniously. So now that you're attuned to Reiki and you have the self-awareness you need to start slaying the demons left and right, go for it. Practice on yourself. Practice on open-minded friends and family. You are the healer. (laughs) You are possibly the one that incarnated in that family, even if you feel like the black sheep, to be bringing massive healing to them. And maybe they won't be open, whoever it is you're thinking of, right away to the type of healing that you can eventually offer them for real. And I mean, eventually, as in right now, but they got to open up to it first, right? How do you soften them up? Just live by example and time will do the rest. And it won't even take that much time. Live the greatest and most uh, attuned version to the love energy of source that you can of yourself. Be that version of self. And everything around you will begin to take responsibility for its own energy as well. Granted, you also have to develop healthy boundaries, but that's part of your own loving yourself shtick that you're going to get so good at and just going to keep getting better at through life. Even when you seem like you fall down on it, you can get right back up as soon as you're ready. Be the observer. So thank you, Sarah, for getting me thinking these deep thoughts. And I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast. I sure did. I'm definitely interested in doing some soul painting for somebody someday and see what we come up with. That's a great, great thing. And I know you all probably are feeling the same way. I'm going to play you guys out tonight with a little bit of new Flintwick. And Flintwick is a homie. He's been on the show before. His name's Brady Cagle. Amazing dude. Super high love energy. And his music is crazy. You're going to realize that if you stick around to hear it. Go find Flintwick on SoundCloud. You'll be glad you did. It's like Tipper and the Floozies had a baby. And they actually raised it and taught it everything they knew. (laughs) But seriously... Brady's the man. He'll also be at Backwoods, which you hear me talking about all the time, which is coming up really soon. Don't forget about that. It's going to be at the very end of May, May 29th to June 2nd. I'll be there on Sunday, June 2nd, delivering an Interverse live podcast with a lot of epic homies and artists that are going to be joining on the panel. And if you come out to it, you can join us too and chip in, give us your, your thoughts. We'd love to harmonize with you. Also, would love to hear your thoughts in a review on iTunes or you share the show, make a comment on something somewhere, tag me in this or that. Let's get connected. I love my tribe. I love you guys. Listening is cool, but let's actually you know, interact a little more. Not that I don't get so much going on social media sometimes that it's almost like, ah, this is too much, but I promise, hit me up and at some point I'll be getting back to you. I love to hear from you guys. Also, don't forget subscribing on SoundCloud. You can also do uh, iTunes and Spotify, basically everywhere. YouTube, there's nowhere the universe isn't that I've really felt like a lot of people are there. I guess I'm not on Vimeo. You got me. There's something I haven't bothered doing, but I do my best to get it out there everywhere. So subscribe on your favorite platform. Definitely Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes. Those are some strong platforms. And that's it. Thanks for being with me. I hope you're really feeling like me that you want to love yourself to the best extent you can and be feeling good because the secret to doing the right thing for yourself, even like with health and stuff that seems hard or like you're, I don't know, giving stuff up. It actually, you feel so good when you're in harmony that and in balance that that wholeness is what you are actually seeking for in the things that weren't good for you and not finding. So I'm learning it, continuing to learn it. I love that you're on the journey with me. So I'll close you out with uh, this Flintwick and just keep taking care of yourself, shining the light of your love within to the world. You want to get wild and crazy one? Yeah, yeah. Wild one. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, my God. 